Syngenta Crop Protection Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. I, I think with all the the analytical tools we have uh, to our disposal, um, soil tests, tissue tests. Uh, putting your shadow out into the field is the best thing to do. Um, a part of our, our scouting program is trying to visit these fields once a week and noticing things. So we were just here uh, a couple days ago and noticed these uh, strips uh, in this field. And uh, um, getting out and taking a, a tissue test at the two or three leaf stage, which is what this plant is, is really, really valuable because a cereal plant will typically respond to nitrogen up until about the five leaf stage. So by the time we take a test, see these symptoms, get it to the lab and get results back in recommendation, um, we're lucky, we're close to Calgary, so we get quick freight to the lab, but uh, it's typically four to, four to seven days. So we still have about a week. In a week, this plant's gonna put on a leaf, maybe two leaves if it's really warm and humid. So we re you really have to be on the early side of diagnosing a problem. If a field looked like this, and there are strips or there's definite signs uh, of nitrogen shortages or deficiencies in the plant, I would just apply. Um, because time is so critical, we've got a spotty forecast with, with showers and stuff, so everything works better when it's wetter. Typically a wheat plant will put on about a leaf a week after it emerges. Um, so we've got about a month, and by the time your crop comes up, you finish seeding, you're at two or three leaf and you're thinking of spraying, uh, we've basically got about 10 to 14 days, typically, in a wheat situation to uh, do a top dressing. Um, so as predictable as the forecasts are, uh, pay attention to them and if you get some, some favorable weather conditions, apply when you have a, a wet forecast coming. Um, like I said, the, the wheat plant or a cereal plant will typically respond to nitrogen up to about five leaf. This is really, really sandy soil. So when we have really sandy soil like this, um, our nitrogen is prone to uh, mainly leaching, which is just nitrogen movement down through the profile, um, where roots might not be able to um, uptake that nitrogen through the year. Uh, the other main nitrogen loss mechanism that's happened uh, across the prairies is um, denitrification where just uh, excessive moisture uh, basically saturates the soil there's no oxygen in there um, the the organic matter and, and all the bugs are, are really um, slow and inactive and uh, the nitrogen ends up turning into a gaseous form and um, going up into the atmosphere Um, fertilizer in, uh, in crop or post seeding is always really risky um, just in the sense uh, especially in the uh, urea broadcasting urea on on the surface after a crop has been seeded um, you could lose a very significant amount of that nitrogen to volatilization now that's dependent on pH and soil temperature soil moisture uh, a wind uh, whatnot um, there are protection strategies you can have on that in treating um, urea with agritain um, that'll protect it for you know up to 10 to 14 days worth um, when you get the rain it dissolves the nitrogen and, and uh, that's a really good strategy using ESN this time of year in broadcasting um, as much as I love ESN in early seeding or winter wheat I don't think that would at all be a, a really good fit for this situation Dribble banding is awesome. Um, it's in a liquid form, it gets into the soil um, using a, a product like UAN, urea ammonium nitrate, uh, which is a 2800 product. So absolutely, I think it's a good idea. Um, use the diagnostic tools you have, look at your field. Clay soils, um, like we work with uh, some really heavy clay soils and it's unbelievable how well it holds nitrogen. This soil, uh, I looked it up on my soil test here in the field and it, it just does not hold it. This is um, 65 to 85% sand in, 
in this area. So we have to take uh, texture tests when we're doing our, our manure applications. Um, so in that case, we're looking at a centimeter a day of nitrogen movement through the soil. Um, I've seen a lot of clay soils that were fertilized in the fall or in the spring and went months without being seeded in, into uh, another crop for forage or whatever and the nitrogen was still there. It may move in the profile, but the way we take our tests in, in segregating the different depths, we'll do a zero to six, a six to 12, and a 12 to 24. The other nitrogen strategy that I really like to use, uh, and this is something that, that our, our provinces to the east of us have used for years, is applying nitrogen and top dressing as a risk management tool. I love that strategy. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're fertilizing for an average crop. So say we're fertilizing for a 50 bushel crop. If we have the conditions today that look like, yeah, geez, uh, things are looking good, we're going to shoot for a 60 bushel crop, we can do it, but we've got 10 days to do it. So we can apply another 20 or 30 pounds of nitrogen on as a dribble band or get lucky and uh, if you have pivots you can broadcast on some urea and water it in. Um, there's lots of different ways to get nitrogen into your soil. Um, some have more risk than others.